Look, it is, uh, I like the choice of music there. I like it, I like it. Welcome back. It is Pushing the Limits on a Monday. Great sports weekend. We got the college basketball season right around the corner. UNLV football in full swing, so to speak. Of course, the NFL season right around the corner. Let's not forget about hockey, right? Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights preseason not too far away. And, well, if you haven't been paying attention, uh, they had a pretty nice signing there several days ago. Uh, a guy that has been in the NHL since 2006. I was 26 years old. I'm 42 now. Uh, boy, he's got, uh, you look at his stats, he's got close to 1,000 points in his career, which is pretty incredible. Uh, 557 assists. He's approaching 400 goals. I'm talking about Phil Kessel. And I figured what better person to talk a little VGK hockey and his buddy Phil Kessel than the man himself, six-time World Series of Poker champion and friend of the show. Of course, Real Kid Poker, Danny Negrano, joining us right down the line. Daniel, as always, I appreciate you coming on, my man. How you doing? Well, thanks for having me. And you know that's my favorite song. Is that why you guys play it for me? Because it really is. Of course. A thousand yeah. percent. What is your yeah. Bob Marley? Out of curiosity, what is Danny Negreanu's least favorite song here? I'm curious. Well, anything that has a country tune talks about whiskey and wine and and written. I don't know. I'm not a country guy. So if it's country, it's, it's on the bottom of my list. There's a hot song right now called Tennessee Whiskey, right? No, Am I wrong? I'm not a really country guy either, Daniel. But I think don't. there is. There's a song out with Using those two words that you just talked about, Daniel. I thought you were going to say, well, aren't they? Yeah, right there. That's it right there. Yeah. Don't play My it. dog done died. I drank a bottle of wine. You know, I'm like, <laughs> all the same. I thought you were going to say Kenny Rogers, uh, the Kenny Rogers song, No When to Hold Him. No, I'm sure no, no, you that, that, that was iconic. So I got it. Is, yeah. I, it is iconic. Mm -hmm. You're right. All right, uh, Mr. VGK fan, let's talk a little hockey. Uh, that's the main reason why I wanted to get you on here. I know you've had a friendship with Phil Kessel, and it's so weird, Danny, right? Because like a month and a half ago, I think, we were talking about Phil Kessel. We were talking about how he'd be a nice addition to the team. What was your first reaction when you heard the Vegas Golden Knights signed Phil Kessel? Well, obviously, Phil and I have been friends since the days when he played in Toronto. You know, we played in a little game back then. And, you know, we kind of we've been we hung out ever since when he got traded um, from Toronto to Pittsburgh. I remember he was at the World Series of Poker, and we were chatting. You know, we found out the news, and I said, you know, Pittsburgh. I said, you know, it could be worse. He's like Crosby, Malkin. Okay, we could do some damage here. So we've been friends for a really long time. Obviously, he loves Vegas. You know, he does like to play poker and whatnot. Um, but, you know, last year I thought maybe that we could swing for him instead of Dadanov or something like that. His contract was a little heftier back then. And, um, like, I know he – I mean, he wanted to play here, right? This is the spot. This is, like, you know, perfect for him. Um, having said that, I want to say that, like, the deal he gets for 1.5 is going to be an absolute steal of the offseason. Absolute steal for what he brings to the table. And the way that you build a team properly, as far as I'm concerned, is you think of it in terms of money ball, right? If you can get a player and you pay him $1.5 million, but he can play at a $3.5 million level, do that across the board and have people exceeding their contracts, all of a sudden, you know, you've got something here. And I think Kessel has a lot to prove this year to people. Because I, it's funny, when he went to Arizona, he was sort of a forgotten man where people forget this. Two years ago, there was a 50 game, 56 game season. He had 20 goals. Last year in Arizona, he had 44 assists, only eight goals. His goal total was down. That was more assist than anyone on the Vegas Golden Knights. So what we've done, frankly, is we replaced offensively on the power play a $7 million player who's always injured when you need him with a $1.5 million player who's better offensively on the power play. Right. And guess what? He's the Iron Man in the NHL history. 82 games last year. Yep. When, you play, when you play, he's played, if you include playoffs, he's already passed Keith Yandel. He needs eight more to win the regular season. But he also played about 80 playoff games without missing one. So he's you make a good point. You make a couple of good points, Daniel. First of all, the point that he stays healthy at his age, which is so important. Number two, and I and we agree on this, he is still at his age a wonderful playmaker. They need that on the power play, which has struggled mightily the last couple of years. Yes, he only had eight goals, but that doesn't mean he can't score 20 in well, the right part of the two, though, Part of the reason he had eight was because he had to facilitate. That team was made up without a lot of exactly like playmakers on it. So what he did was he took on that role. Right, so he was playmaking for other people. Put him on a spot with good players, as he had with the Crosby and Latangs in the, the past. Mm -hmm. Put him on a line on the, in, you know an offensive starts with some good players. All of a sudden, you're going to see him get more opportunities. Yeah, to, you know to have some high danger chances for himself. So I'm not. I mean, I'm not worried about him performing in that regard. I think he's had a bad rap ever since the Toronto days in terms of not being defensive minded. Listen, he's not the guy you're going to have out there with a minute left and a three-two lead. Right, but guess what? If you're down 3-2 and you need a goal, 
guess who you want on the ice? You're going to want Kessel out there. No question. And I think something else that we haven't brought up yet, and I think you'll agree with me, is his leadership, his veteran leadership. This guy has been there before. I think he'll be that person in the locker room. They they had some chemistry issues. I think that's fair to say over the last year or two. I actually think that Phil will fit in well with this team, and I think he's going to be that guy. I think he's going to be a fan favorite. Fans are going to love him. He's an outspoken guy. I like his honesty uh, when, when it comes to the media. And uh, I think uh, – the fans are going to embrace it. I think they're going to like him. I'm sure you would agree with that. I sort of, I disagree with one part of it in terms of the leadership part. He's, I agree with the second half of what you said is he'll fit in well, but he's never been that guy. He's not going to be in there and be like, all right, boys, let's go. You know, like he's not going to take on that role. What he's going to want to do is fit in, mm -hmm. you know, play his role, be a likable guy on the team. He's like, you know, he's, he's well liked within, you know, within the league. Like people like Phil, he's, he's a, he's a peculiar cat to say the least. Um, but he's a lot of fun. I remember one of my favorite interviews he did was with Pierre Maguire and Pierre says, how's your breath? And Phil looks at him and goes, oh, it's bad, eh? He's like, no, no, I mean, like, are you tired? He's like, oh, I thought you meant <laughs> is bad. It's one of my favorite little interviews with him. And then, of course, he made fun of the hot dog store. I don't know if for those of you that are yeah. new to Phil Kessel, yeah. there was a guy named Steve Simmons in Toronto who wrote a hit piece on Phil, which is complete baloney, and they figured it out. He doesn't even really eat hot dogs, okay? But he made up this story that Phil wasn't in shape and he was eating hot dogs every day after games or whatever. So after he won the cup in Pittsburgh, and I got this picture, I got it in my phone. He's on the golf course with the Stanley Cup and he put six hot dogs in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't remember seeing that picture. Oh my God, that is, that is absolutely hilarious. You know, I, I think of guys on the nights like Petrangelo, we know he's a really, really good player, mm -hmm. but let's be honest, he's not very well liked, at least from, from what I've heard from players in the locker room. And and, and I hear you, uh, Kessel won't be that guy, that leadership guy that's going to get in there on the bench and start yelling at people and all that. But I think more importantly, he's a veteran guy. He's well-respected. And when he does decide to speak, people are going to listen. He's going to have people's attention. I wouldn't say that about some of the other guys on this Vegas Golden Knights team, but I think Kessel has earned that respect in the league. You know what Kessel is? You know what you're going to get with Kessel, right? So mm -hmm. I think the team, to you know, to its strength to some degree, they're always looking for sort of two-way players, you know, guys that can play both ends and 200-foot players. And that's nice to have, right? But at mm -hmm. the same time, there is value in having guys that are very clear in their role, whether it's Philip Deneau saying he's our shutdown center, we're going to shut it down, or a guy who just scores goals, you know, and plays offense. And that's what Phil Kessel is going to bring to the table. You know, I expect that they're going to fit him in probably on the third line. And, you know, on the power play, I would say just leave him out there. You know, my really, my interesting question is going to be how he meshes with Jack Eichel, because I've watched a lot of hockey, obviously, and I see a lot of similarities in terms of how they like to drive the power play from the wall. But Phil Kessel does this really cool thing where from the wall, he comes up, he brings the puck up to the blue line, and then he, sh he darts right up the middle mm -hmm. into a high danger place. He's either going to shoot it or pass and create totally different lanes with a sort of a little loop. And I know Jack Eichel is similar in that regard, but listen, here's the thing. Kessel has proven, especially in the playoffs that he can elevate his game. Those two seasons where Pittsburgh won the cup, he had 45 points in those two playoffs, Yeah, right? He was, it was, it was leading the team in one of those seasons. The second, I think he was second in scoring, but yep. this is a guy where if it's four, one, right. And there's eight minutes left in the third, he's probably not going to like finish a check. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But if it's two, two in the Stanley cup playoffs, he's going sure. to back. Like he's going to do all those things. No Part question. of how he's been able to stay healthy enough mm -hmm. to play you know, he's smart enough not to put himself into dangerous situations where he's going to get hurt. And that's more important as you get older. Yep. There's another topic, obviously, on the front burner. And we always get into it, right, Daniel, yourself, me, and Brian. And it's the goaltending situation. Of course, uh, recent news here in the past few days is uh, VGK has come out and said that the, they're going to be uh, looking at both Logan Thompson as well as Broussois between the pipes this season for the Vegas Golden Knights, obviously because of the situation regarding Robin Leonard. First of all, I want you to get your thoughts. Do you think it's going to be a true type of maybe platoon situation between these two guys? Or do you think someone like, like Logan Thompson is going to be able to stick take the step forward and grab the reins and prove that he is a number one NHL goaltender for the Vegas Golden Knights. Okay. If we're going to use odds and math and statistics, yeah. we have to say absolutely not. We have the most, the biggest question mark in the league in terms of goaltending, the worst tandem in the league. We have Logan Thompson who did perform well, but he's had 19 starts, right? So he's a rookie. Now, if he's to be expected to take on the number one role over a longer period of time, what also happens too is once teams have seen him a little bit, there's a book on him. Right. So now they'll be more prepared to figure out, well, listen, is he weak? You know, high blocker side, you know, where, where are the holes here? So I have major concerns. 
I do, I do like the fact that they didn't go out and rush and get a goalie yet. Cause let's see, right. Let's give him 20 games where he can play with Brisson, maybe like a 15, five split or something like that. If it works out, you know, maybe you don't need to, if not, Either A, you just say, you know what, this season is a waste, or B, you say maybe we try to pitch for, you know, getting Varlamov from the Islanders or, you know, even somebody as bad as like James Reimer or something. But I I definitely think the biggest hole in the team by a wide margin right now is goaltending. I think like even when Logan was good in the shootout or whatever, his numbers were just kind of okay, yeah. right? Like Robin Lehner last year, people forget they have like amnesia. The first half of the season last year when they were all banged up, he kept them in games. He was the MVP of the team by far. He got banged up. He got hurt. His play went as a result of being completely broken. Um, and Logan Thompson did an okay job. But I have major concerns about a young goalie. Goaltending is probably – this is the reason why you see in the league, you see 19-year-olds playing in the NHL. You don't see 19-year-old goalies. Goalies take much longer to develop, right? So this is going to be yeah. his first opportunity. I wish him the best. I hope, you know, Logan – but I do think there's an added pressure now of, of being the guy. and. Um, you know, a heavier workload. We have no idea. Historically, his numbers have been good, but I, I, I mean, listen, if you're looking at like, what are the odds that a rookie goalie is just going to be great? It's very rare that happens. Maybe Patrick Waugh, Ken Dryden. It's possible, but it's an underdog to happen. Understood. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with six time world series of poker champion, Danny Negreanu, VGK super fan. So, uh, Daniel, Sean Burke, uh, my former goaltender, if you remember the days of the Hartford Whalers, uh, he is, uh, he just was recently hired as the goaltender coach. Uh, and I wanted to get him on the show. We'll be getting the head coach on, but uh, they're not letting Sean do many interviews because of what we were just talking about. Right. There's so much controversy around the goalie situation. You want to talk about a guy that they just hired into a situation that is one of the more difficult goaltender situations in all the NHL as soon as the season starts. Uh, what you said about Logan Thompson, and by the way, he was at the Aces game yesterday. That was kind of cool to see him there. He seems like a very confident young man. He knows, and listen, you have to be confident, right? Maybe a little bit overconfident. I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think Logan Thompson is ready to be a legit starter in the NHL. I think he could be a backup anywhere. I don't think he's ready to be a legit starter. What do you say, Daniel? Well, yeah, I mean, listen, here's the thing. You don't typically see a rookie goalie spend their first real season as the number one guy, usually they are in, you know, a mentored studied role where they, you know, they get spot starts, they get good starts, they get good situations for them, you know, to, to thrive and develop. So he's not, he's sort of being thrown to the wolves right here. And I do think, like you said, if you lose your confidence as a goalie, just like a poker player, you're done. So him, if you want to lean towards, you know, under like overconfident is better than not confident enough. So I, I like to hear that, but yeah, I think he's in for it. I do think he's got a lot going for him though, because Bruce Cassidy, the system that he employs, and he says so himself, it's goalie friendly, right? They are going to have men in front of the net. They're going to clear pucks. They're going to do the things they need to to give this guy the best opportunity to shine. But yeah, listen, if you're going into the playoffs and we're playing against Colorado and Logan Thompson's our guy in the net, I don't, I don't, I don't like our chances to be honest. Neither do I. Neither do I. And but Cass isn't there a point yeah. though, Daniel and Brian, where you, ha you have to S or get off the pot, right? Kind of mentality, right? Look, it's not like we're talking about Logan Thompson being a 22, 23 year old goaltender. He's 25 years old, right? There, there, and to, with respect to his confidence, as Brian talked about, you absolutely got to believe that Logan Thompson thinks, you know what? I am, I'm 25 years old. I'm ready to grab the reins. I'm ready to be that guy for Vegas or for any team in the NHL. You know, it's, I don't know necessarily think that's overconfidence. I just think that maybe, you know, what, what are we going to wait for? Are we going to wait for Logan Thompson to be 27, 28 years old and be essentially in his prime before no, I don't you think expect him to take, no, 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 to take that, like, yeah. what you have to realize too, though, is most rookie goalies are mm -hmm. 25. Like okay. 25 is the age of a rookie. Again, we sort of talked about how, you know, with set forwards and defense, they play a little bit younger, but goalies right. 25 is usually, and he, here's the thing. The trajectory for him, and this is the only concern, is, of course, typically a, a goalie that young, they play behind the starter, and then they fight for starts, and, you know, they start to improve. They have one full season under their belt. Logan last year was sort of thrown to the Wolves. You know, he came in and was admirable and did fine, but now he's going to be thrown into a unit. You, you don't see this really anywhere. Like, even Shosturkin, right, who's maybe the best goalie along with Vasilevsky, his first year, he didn't just start all the games. He was behind Georgiev and Lundqvist, yeah. right? So he was sort of fighting for jobs there. So. It's going to be tough for him to put on a full schedule and, you know, to perform at a high level. I do think that Bruce Cassidy will in, put in a system, as I said, that gives him the best chance. And I think that that'll help a lot. But again, yeah. I don't think that that's going to be a strength of ours with uh, the tandem that we have right now. 
I think as we get closer to the season, I'm going to ask you your predictions throughout the year. And there's so many, you know, there's luck involved. There's injuries involved. There's a lot involved here, but I'll, I'll ask you as we get closer to the season, I, I'm curious about one thing you talked about uh, being confident as you being one of the better poker players in the world over the past 20 years, if you've had a really bad session or a bad couple sessions in a row, have you ever gone to a poker table in your career where you were not confident? Absolutely. Absolutely. And part of it has to do with like, so like anybody who goes through a losing streak or for a hockey player, you know, a hockey player who just, you know, is getting good shots and they're not going in kind of like what Fessel Phil Kessel had last year where the shooting percentage was a career low, right? When that happens, you start to second guess and you start to wonder, is it me or is it luck? And you have to do that sort of, uh, you know, self, you know, discovery, if, if you will, introspection. And um, I've certainly gone to a poker table where, you know, it's been a bad, like, two-week period. And I'm like, I'm not so sure, you know. But that's very rare. And when it happens, it happens for a short period of time for me. And I usually correct it very quickly, you know, in my next session. I'm surprised, though, to hear you say that. I really am, because with all the success you've had, I mean, obviously, not every professional poker player is going to play great. You're going to have days where you make mistakes. and you. But I'm surprised that actually – you don't say to yourself, all right, you know, I made a few mistakes here, but we'll get them tomorrow. I'm surprised to hear you say that. Well, no, it's true. And like, you know, it's it, the hockey reference for me is, is I think a lot of people overreact to small samples, right? Mm -hmm. So an interviewer might say to Ovechkin, he's like, Ovechkin, you know, Alex, uh, what's been going wrong? You know, last four games you haven't scored, you know, what's been going on? And it's like, but in real, in reality, say for example, Ovechkin's taking a shot that has about a eight to 12% chance to go in, right? You can go on streaks where even though you did everything right and the shot was good, Eight out of 100 times you score. So you can go through streaks maybe right. where you take more shots than that and, you know, they're not going in. So um, mm. you really have to focus on your process and what you're doing. And that's harder, though. It's harder when streaks are bad for you, whether it's poker or whether it's hockey. Like, you know, for a guy like Phil, he's a little bit of a streaky player in that regard, too. And last year, you know, it can get into your head. You know, you should, you keep it's like, my God, goalie robbed me again. Goalie robbed me again. And those streaks can can wear and can have a you know a toll on you. But then there's the other side of it, right, Daniel? We can talk about hockey or we can talk about poker. I hear a lot of professional poker players say, you don't want to be overconfident either because you're overconfident. You sit at the table and you just assume you're the best player at the table. That's how you lose all your chips. So it goes, it can go both ways, right? Yeah, but again, just like the hockey thing or the goalie thing, if you're gonna err one way or the other, being overconfident is much better than not confident enough, right? Because at least you, you're you're in there. You're battling. You're in there. You feel like you can. And you know what? Well, listen, that overconfidence often corrects itself. If you go in there thinking you're a bull in a china shop and you get your butt kicked over and over, all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, okay. And that's how I was when I was 21, 22, 23, coming to Las Vegas. I'm like, I'm going to kill these guys. Nope. That's not how it worked out. So it was a nice little learning lesson. But I think starting overconfident and, you know, sort of toning that down is safer and better and gives you more an opportunity to be great. Do you ever reminisce and be like, wow, in my early 20s, you know, I was borrowing money from these people and I was broke. And now here you are years later, you know, with the obviously with, with all the accolades you have and, and you're backing other people. Do you ever go back to your early 20s and think about that a lot of where you what you become since those days? Think about it often. And I think it sort of led to kind of how I am with people in terms of generosity, because I have empathy for those that are broke and I've been there. And I remember the four hundred dollar loan, you know. I remember the $400 loan when I went to the barrage and I just lost all my chips and a guy I knew from Toronto gave me 400 bucks and, you know, and I ran that up and like, who knows what would have been if I didn't have that 400 bucks. So, you know, since then I feel like I've paid that back a thousand fold, but, um, mm -hmm. but no, I remember all the little moments um, of, you know, I think it's important to sort of be grounded and remember that, you know, you're not far removed from that. And it, it also, like I said, I have empathy for those who are struggling through it because it's tough. I don't think uh, you've asked anybody for four hundred dollars anytime lately. <laughs> That's yes. for sure. Hey, Daniel, it's always a pleasure having you on, my friend, and uh, love to have you on again as the season approaches. And then I'll probably ask you some more questions about expectations and that sort of stuff. But uh, appreciate you coming on, and as always, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, my man, thank you. Thanks, right. Daniel. Go fill the thrill. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm looking at that number eight. He's going to have a snowman on all we're, season we're long. We're going to see Daniel. The ordered. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 coming. Yeah, it's well, on the way to the house, right? Do you? Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, are you? I I don't know if you're one. Will you get that signed by Phil, or is that just weird because you're his friend? I probably won't get it signed, but I mean, if he wants to sign it, he can sign it. I don't care. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'll leave All right, it up. <laughs> Fair enough. Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it, Daniel. Right. Have All a good right, one. Dude. That's yeah. a real kid poker, Danny Negron.